हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम अशोक गोयल फॉर द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स एंड एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट सिमेट्रीज इन मॉलिक्यूल्स एंड क्रिस्टल्स पार्ट वन दिस मॉड्यूल इज फ्रॉम द पेपर मैथमेटिकल फिजिक्स सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट एस सी what we are going to learn in this module in this module you will learn the symmetry operations in crystals and molecules you will learn about the classification of crystal systems and about the point groups corresponding to these systems Mole what are molecules molecules are made of atoms or ions which are arranged in some geometric form which may remain invariant under some symmetry operations be it rotation or reflection or whatever crystals on the other hand have a regular arrangement of atoms molecules or ions each repeating itself at all points in the space all space directions it can be thought of as formed of a lattice and a basis what is a lattice lattice is a regular pattern of points which can be in one two or three dimensions the neighborhood of a point in a lattice is identical to any other point a group of atoms molecules or ions associated with each lattice point is called a basis so a basic repeated unit of lattice is called a unit cell and how is a unit cell specified unit cell in three dimensions is specified by three lengths a b c and three angles alpha beta gamma between axis and they form the building blocks of the crystal a lattice in one dimensions is very simple it is a repetition in a linear way of similar molecules or ions separated by a certain distance therefore the lattice in one dimension is just specified by one length parameter let us say a as shown in the slide a lattice in two dimensions is an arrangement of molecules in a two dimensional plane and obviously it is specified by two lengths and one angle for example in the slide you can see the molecules being arranged in such a way that you have a lattice which is specified by two vectors a and b and an angle alpha between them a lattice in three dimensions is obviously specified by three lengths and three angles as shown in the slide in this case the unit cell is defined as the cell with the least possible volume which is given by the scalar vector product of a dot with b cross c where a b and c are three length parameters which is specify the lattice and the angles between them are specified by alpha beta and gamma now symmetry of molecules and crystals play an extremely important role in the study of the electronic structure of molecules and their properties like spectra structure dipole moments etc in the case of crystals the symmetry allows us to study the diffraction of waves from crystals it helps us to find the electronic structure paramagnetic resonances etc let us discuss the symmetry operations in a crystal the symmetry operations that is transformation rx on a crystal can be written as x prime is equal to r of x acting on x so r of x is the symmetry operation this in term can be written as an operator a acting on this vector x plus a constant vector a where this constant vector a is a 3 by 
orthogonal matrix representing the symmetry operation. No, A is a constant vector and R is a 3 by 3 orthogonal matrix representing the symmetry operation. The symmetry operations may include translation and other symmetry operations like rotations, reflections and a combination of the two. If a group of transformations leaves one point of the system undisplaced in position, when would it happen? If one point in the system has to remain where it is, undisplaced, this implies there is no translation. So only symmetry group is the group of symmetry operators acting on this molecule. And this group is called a point group. Thus, molecules possess only point symmetry. Whereas in crystals, we have two categories of symmetry groups. What are these two categories? Number one, the symmetry group that leaves at least one point of the crystal undisturbed is called crystallographic point group. So, once again, if one point remains undisturbed, then the symmetry group of the crystal is called the crystallographic point group. On the other hand, if we include translation symmetry, then the crystallographic symmetry group is called the space group symmetry. We will first study the point groups and later on the space group. Let us now discuss the symmetry operations of a point group. Number one, the identity operator. By its very definition, identity operator is the one that does nothing to it. For example, the vector x is transformed into itself by the identity operator E. Therefore, the identity operator E can be represented by a diagonal 3 by 3 matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. The second symmetry operation of a point group is the rotation C. The rotation C is defined as clockwise rotation around an axis, any axis, let us say Z axis, by an amount which is equal to 2 pi by n. So this rotation brings the molecule back into its equivalent position. In this, Cn denotes 2 pi by n rotations around n fold axis of symmetry. This n fold axis of symmetry is called the principal axis. In fact, a molecule in general may have more than one axis of symmetry. For example, if you look at the planar molecule XeFe4, it has a C4 rotation about the Z axis. So your Z axis molecule is a planar molecule in the XY plane, and therefore you rotate it by an angle pi by 4 or 2 pi by 4, 3 pi by 4, the molecule is brought back to its original position. Whereas it also has another axis of symmetry, for example, the x-axis. If you rotate the molecule about the x-axis by an angle pi or over the y-axis by an angle pi, again, the, you get the same configuration with which you started. The matrix representation of a clockwise symmetry rotation by a, an angle 2 pi by n about an axis that is called the z-axis is obtained by rotating the vector whose components are x, y, z to another vector of components x prime, y prime, z prime by a rotation 3 by 3 matrix. If you rotate by an angle 2 pi by n, this rotation 3 by 3 matrix consists of elements cosine 2 pi by n, sine 2 pi by n, 0, minus sine 2 pi by n, cosine 2 pi by n, 0, and 0, 0, 1. This is the rotation about the z-axis and obviously it leaves the norm of the vector invariant. The next symmetry operation is reflection. The molecules may also exhibit symmetry under reflection in a plane. If the plane is perpendicular 
to the principal rotation axis. It is called the horizontal plane and is designated as sigma h. And if the plane of reflection contains the principal axis is called the plane sigma v. In case there is symmetry under reflection through a plane which bisects the angle between three atoms and contains the principal axis, then it is called the dihedral reflection plane sigma d. For the above planar molecules, the plane sigma h, sigma v, and sigma d are shown in the slide. Symmetry operation rotations via reflection. A molecule may exhibit symmetry under reflections. The reflection can be in a plane which can be perpendicular to the principal axis. It could be a plane which contains the principal axis or it could be a plane which contains the principal axis but bisects the angle between three molecules. These three planes of reflection are specified by three notations sigma v, sigma h and sigma d. Sigma v is the plane of reflection which contains the principal axis. Sigma h is the horizontal plane which is perpendicular to the principal axis and sigma d is the plane which contains the principal axis but bisects the angle between any three atoms or molecules. For example, if you look at the reflection in the xy plane, then what the reflection does is to leave x and y components of the vector unchanged and shift and change the z component to minus z component. Therefore, a reflection in the xy plane, sigma xy for example, can be represented as a rotation by a matrix which has 1, 1, minus 1 in its diagonal elements. So, after rotation and uh, reflection, we have inversion, a symmetry of inversion. What happens in this? The molecular shape may be such that all points on the molecule are reflected through a single point. Suppose they are reflected through a certain point z, then what it means is that the components of the vector x, y, z are rotated to x prime, y prime, z prime, where x prime is equal to x, y prime is equal to y, and z prime is equal to minus z. Now, another symmetry, which is called the improper rotation, is a rotation by an angle of 2 pi by n, about some axis of rotation, and then followed by a reflection. In which plane? Followed by a reflection in the plane, which is perpendicular to the rotation axis. So, if you have a symmetry wherein the molecule remains the same after it has rotated by an angle of 2 pi by n and then further followed by a reflection sigma in the plane perpendicular to the rotation axis, then the molecule is supposed to possess the improper rotation symmetry. The requirement of translation symmetry in crystal restricts the number of possible crystal graphic point groups because there is now one further symmetry of translation. The lattice appears to be identical viewed from any point in the lattice and therefore if the rotation by a given angle about an axis passing through a lattice point is a symmetry of the lattice, then the rotation about a parallel axis passing through another lattice point is also a symmetry. This is because it has to be consistent with translation. It turns out that in three dimensions, only n-fold rotations which are consistent with translational symmetry are no rotation, two-fold rotation, three-fold rotation, four-fold rotation, and six-fold rotation. I'm sure you are aware of this from your studies in the condensed matter or solid state physics. Five-fold rotation symmetry is forbidden in the crystals, but it may well 
exist in molecules. In fact, there are some protein molecules which have a five-fold symmetry and even seven-fold symmetry, but we are not going to be concerned with them. There are 32 crystallographic point groups based on the symmetry operations as discussed above. We will discuss these point groups as we go along. I will now discuss the point groups. Point groups are the groups form the group of symmetry of molecules. First and foremost, we have five rotational groups which are designated as C1, C2, C3, C4 and C6. These rotational group corresponding to a rotation by an angle 2 pi by n where n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 corresponding to the group C1, C2, C3 and C4. So this rotation is about an axis normal to the plane of the polygon passing through the center of symmetry. Now the group consisted of n rotations Cn, Cn square, Cn cube up to Cn to the power n which of course is equal to the identity operator E forms a cyclic group and is denoted by the symbol Cn. So the group denoted by the symbol Cn stands for a rotation by an angle 2 pi by n about an axis normal to the plane of the polygon and its elements simply Cn, Cn square, Cnn is equal to E and it is a cyclic group. Next we have another five groups obtained by adding another symmetry. That is, suppose we add reflection in the horizontal plane sigma h. Now the reflection in the horizontal plane sigma h is a group of order 2 and it is denoted by C1h which has two elements E and sigma h. E is the identity sigma h is the reflection in the horizontal plane. Then the five groups obtained by rotation and then reflection that is the, the resulting five groups obtained by adding rotations are obtained by the direct product of the group Cn with Cmh and this is denoted by Cnh which is a direct product of Cn and C1h. So we have five groups C1, C2, C3, C4 and C6 and the five more groups Cnh obtained by the direct product of these groups Cn with the group C1h. This group is of order 2n because Cn is a group of order n and this Cnh is the direct product of the two groups. So this group is of order 2n and has 2n elements. Now the existence of a reflecting plane passing through the axis of rotation implies an existence of n sigma v planes and thus we have four more groups denoted by Cnv. Cnv again has 2n elements and n corresponds to the rotation by an angle 2 pi by 2, 2 pi by 3, 2 pi by 4 and 2 pi by 6. To this we can now add inversion symmetry i to the five rotation groups. By adding the inversion symmetry we form new groups which are denoted by S2n which is a direct product of the group Sn with S2 where S2 is a two element group, is an inversion group. It is two elements, the two elements obviously being the identity and the inversion i. However, S2 is isomorphic to the group C1h and all groups Sn are not new groups. In fact, for n even, that is n is equal to 2, 4 and 6, S2n is simply Cn cross S2 is identical to Cnv and we have thus only three distinct S2n groups namely S2, S4 and S6. S4 has four elements which are powers of IC4 is equal to S4, that is the group S4 consists of the element E, S4, C4 square, C4 cube. The groups discussed above have only one axis of n-fold symmetry and they are 17 in number. Now at this point I would like to point out that there is no five-fold symmetry which we have considered. In fact, there exist some protein molecules which have five-fold symmetry of rotation, but we are not considering that. Now further, if we have axis of symmetry in the horizontal plane, in addition to the vertical plane, we get four new groups which are denoted by the symbol dn. 
So if there exists an n-fold horizontal axis of symmetry, in addition to an n-fold vertical axis of symmetry, we have another n minus 1 horizontal axis of m fold symmetry. If we have m is equal to 2, we have four new four more new groups of order 2n. They are denoted by dn, and these groups are namely d2, d3, d4, and d6. If in addition to the symmetries of the dn group, the molecules also exhibit the horizontal mirror plane symmetry, then we get Another four new groups denoted by DNH. How many elements does the group DNH has? Obviously, the group DNH has four N elements. The DNH groups can also be thought of as, as arising from the five CNH groups by the addition of a horizontal two fold axis. In this case, C1H with the horizontal two fold axis is identical to C2V. Finally, there are Two more groups denoted by D and D for n is equal to 2 and 3. These groups are obtained by adding diagonal reflection planes bisecting the angle between the two horizontal two fold axes to the symmetry group Dn. We thus get two groups D2D and D3D having 8 and 12 elements respectively. So the groups which we have discussed so far, CN, CNH, DN, DNH, DND, etc. There are 27 point groups discussed so far. These point groups also exist in two dimensional crystals. They are characterized by having one n fold principal axis of symmetry. So all these groups which we have discussed earlier, point groups, they are characterized by having one n fold principal axis of symmetry, which is conveniently chosen to be along the z axis. They may also possess n fold axis of symmetry in the horizontal plane. The horizontal plane is conveniently chosen to be the xy plane. So, there may be rotations in the horizontal plane by an angle pi. So, they may possess n two fold axis of symmetry. In the horizontal plane. In three dimension crystals, there are five more groups of higher symmetry. In these crystals, there is no unique principal axis. There may be more than one principal axis. These groups are also characterized by the existence of four three fold axes along the four diagonals of the cube and are referred to as the cubic system. So, a cubic system of groups is a system where which have higher symmetry. In these crystals, there is no unique principal axis. The largest point group of a cubic symmetry is known as OH. The group OH has 48 elements. What are these 48 elements? These 48 elements consist of 24 proper and 24 improper rotations. The 24 rotations constitute a subgroup of OH and is denoted by the symbol O, which is called the cubic group of proper rotations. Now, what are the 24 elements of the group O? The 24 elements of the group O consist of, of course, the identity and the rotations arising from the existence of three fourfold rotations. So there are three fourfold rotations about the x, y, and z axis passing through the center of the cube. So you have the center of the cube, the rotation by an angle 2 pi by 3, that is three fourfold along the x axis, y axis, and z axis passing through the center of the cube. It further comprises of rotation of pi by 2 pi and 3 pi by 2 along the x, y and z axis. So, what are the elements? The elements are identity and rotations arising from the existence of four, three fourfold rotations about the x, y and z axis passing through the center of the cube and it comprises of rotations of pi by 2, pi and 3 by 2 along x, y and z axis. In addition, 
there are six two fold rotation axes about a line joined the, the center of opposite edges. For example, if you look at the slide, you look at the two opposite edges with center E and F. So if you consider an axis passing through E by F, then there is a two fold symmetry, rotational symmetry, because if you rotate the molecule about an axis passing through E and F by an angle equal to pi, the molecule comes back to its own position. And since there are six such possible axes, so we have six two fold rotation axes about these lines joining the center of opposite as if there are six such opposite edges. Notice that there are six such axes corresponding to 12 edges in a cube. In addition, there are four threefold axes of symmetry along the four cube diagonals. The remaining 24 elements of the group OH are obtained by combining the above 24 rotations with the inversion operate, operator I. These operations are given by rotations followed by an inversion, namely the operation IC4, IC3, IC2, etc. The group OH is thus given by the direct product of the group O with the group consisting of two elements E and I, the inversion group. The groups OH o and O are also known as full octahedral and octahedral group of proper rotations respectively. There is another important group. This group is a regular tetrahedron group denoted by the symbol TD. This group has 24 elements and this also is a subgroup of the group OH. What is a regular tetrahedron? A regular tetrahedron can be inscribed in a cube by joining the points A, B, C and D marked in the cube as shown in the slide. Clearly, inversion and fourfold rotations are not the symmetry operations of the tetrahedron. There is no point in the tetrahedron where in we can consider that to be a center of inversion. There is no such symmetry. The 24 elements of, of the group TD comprise of 12 elements corresponding to improper rotations and 12, the subgroup of 12 proper rotations. So, TD group consists of 12 improper rotations and 12 elements in the proper rotations. The proper rotations of TD is denoted by the group T and finally the group of order 24 can be constructed by taking the direct product of the group T of proper rotations in the regular tetrahedron and the direct product of this with the inversion group which has two elements. So TD can be considered as a direct product of the group T with the inversion group. In three dimensions, there are 15 Breves lattice and semin lattice systems. The semin lattice systems can have different lattice types. There are five different types, namely the primitive lattice, the face centered lattice, the side centered lattice, the body centered lattice, and the rhombohedral lattice. These are all shown in the slides which you can see. So to summarize, we just have in three dimensions semin lattice systems and four Breves lattices. These lattice systems and this semin lattice systems and the 14 Breves lattices, the first system, the lattice system is the system of triclinic crystals. It has only, it has no symmetry of point groups. It's a crystal which is specified by three angles and three lengths, all different. So only symmetry it has is S2 symmetry. 
or the C1. Next, we have the monoclinic lattice system, wherein the two of the angles are 90 degrees. One angle is not 90 degree. All the three lengths are different as shown in the slide. It has one two-fold axis of rotation or a mirror plane. So, its point group is C1H, C2 or C2H. The third lattice system is the is called the orthorhombic system. In this system, the length parameters of the crystals are all unequal, but the angles alpha, beta, gamma are all 90 degrees. In this system of crystals, you have three two-fold axis of rotation or one two-fold axis of rotation plus two mirror planes and the point groups this system belongs to as D2, D2H and C2V. The fourth one is the tetragonal system wherein the, all the angles are equal and two of the length parameters are equal and the third is different. This has a fourfold axis of rotation and the point group these crystals belong to are S4, D2D, C4, HV, D4, D4H, etc. The fifth system is a system of triagonal crystals in which all the length parameters are equal and two of the angles, all the three angles are equal, but none of them is 90 degrees. It has a simple threefold axis of rotation. So its point groups are C3, S3, D3, D3H, etc. So the sixth lattice system, which we consider is the hexagonal system, it is specified by two angles alpha and beta is equal to 90 degrees, two of the length parameters to the same and the third one being different. It has one six-fold axis of rotation and the point groups this crystals belong to are C6, C3H, D3H and C6H. Finally, we have the cubic system. The cubic system consists of the groups which we have discussed earlier, the group T or TH or TD and the group O and group OH. We have in this cubic group, we have three subcategories, PCC, BCC and FCC, face cube crystal, body cube crystal, point crystal, etc. In this, we have all the three lengths equal and all the angles equal to 90 degrees. The group is specified by one threefold axis of rotation and other axis in the horizontal plane and reflections, etc. And the point groups, these crystals belong to a T, TH, TD, O and OH. So, students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. First and foremost, we have learned that the lattice in three dimensions is specified by three lengths and three angles. The unit cell has the least possible volume and it is given by the vector triple product A dot B cross C. Further, point group is the group of transformations that leaves one point in the system undisplaced. Inclusion of translation symmetry in the crystals result what, is, what are known as a space group symmetry. We have seen that a five-fold rotation symmetry is inconsistent with translation symmetry and that we have seen the symmetry operations of a point group are number one, identity, number two, rotation, number three, reflection in the mirror plane, number four, inversion, and number five, improper rotations. Improper rotation means a rotation followed by reflection. Thank you.